This all happened 15 years ago. I was about 19 years old when I was offered a job by my cousin to work for our uncle's glass business. They install giant glass windows into tall buildings and skyscrapers. Not that it's too relevant to the story, but I thought it was worth mentioning. The catch to the job was that I had to temporarily move to Destin, Florida from Tampa. My cousin lived in Russellville, Alabama, and I really wanted to go visit the family there and leave with them together to go back down to Destin. Now, this was my first long distance road trip, and my very first trip away from my immediate family. Back then, I was driving a green Mercury Sable, a car barely capable of getting groceries back home, but in my invincible youth, I didn't really care about that. I was just so pumped to be spreading my wings and getting out into the real world that the risks didn't really concern me. My mom and dad had tried to get me to plan and pack better, knowing the trip could have its pitfalls. But I mean, it wasn't like the trip was going to last days, and also fast food exists, so I wasn't really stressing out about that. I mean, I'm not stupid. I packed for the trip and I'm going to be staying there for a few months in Destin. But they were really adamant on me bringing food, water, emergency supplies, etc. I declined because it wasn't the 1930s, and of course there's gas stations at every exit, and I had a Razor flip phone. My way of thinking was, what could possibly happen on two busy interstates? It wasn't like I was going to some far off country with no cell service. Anyways, fast forward to the trip. I'm a Florida boy, so I had no idea Alabama could get so cold, and I also had no idea that the heat was broken in my car. I had never really used it. At first I'm thankful because by the time I reach Alabama, I'm tired as hell and I had made a lot more stops than I anticipated. I still had a few hours to go, and the cold air was keeping me wide awake. Finally, I pull off the interstate, and I start heading through these smaller numbered roads. The roads didn't really have conventional names like in Florida. They were just numbered, which I kind of found odd. After driving on those a bit, I started being sent down gravel roads. This was the days of MapQuest, so I didn't have a GPS guiding me through the just paved roads or rerouting me around roadblocks. I was starting to get really hungry and I thought back to my parents telling me to pack food. I really should have listened. The sketchiest thing with MapQuest was that you just printed out the directions, so you didn't really have a map to fall back on. So going out of your way to find fast food at an exit came with the potential of legitimately getting lost. So I had basically passed a few times to turn off for food because I was tired and I just didn't want to chance it. Instead, however, I was looking for something off the side of the road that I could easily pull in and then back out with no fuss. But more importantly, no risk of getting lost. My prayers were answered a little down the road when I saw a beat up old country grocery store on my right hand side. It didn't even have a name. It just said grocery right across the front of the white building. I pulled in because the light shining across the grocery sign was on, but found it odd that most of the lights inside were off. I'm not gonna lie, this gave me the creeps a little, but it didn't stop me from going up to the door. I was really starving and maybe this was a 24 hour place, but I wasn't sure. I saw a shadow move across the back of the long aisles as I approached the glass door and surprisingly opened it with ease. At this point, I was honestly half expecting them to be closed due to the lack of lighting inside, and I was really hoping that the owner would take pity on a tired traveler and let me grab some snacks. I then called out, Hello? Anyone here? No one answered. I then said something along the lines of, I saw you when I pulled up and I was hoping you're still open. Again, no answer. Now, this was really naive of me, but I assumed that maybe the owner was just older or something and maybe he couldn't hear me, or that maybe he was deaf, so I went further back into the store. It honestly didn't really smell that great inside there, and I had hoped that they at least had some chips or something. At least those are sealed. Suddenly a man emerged from the back. Oh, I'm so sorry, we were just about to close. How can I help you? He asked with a smile. He clearly made me jump out of my skin at first, but he seemed friendly enough. Not the old man I was picturing before, but actually a much younger guy, maybe in his 30s. Yeah, I just came up from Florida. It's been a long drive. 
I was kinda hoping you guys had something to eat for the trip. Oh, we have plenty. What are you looking for exactly? He said without taking his eyes off me. The guy had a really weird unblinking stare that just really put me on edge. But what made me the most uncomfortable was his smile. He smiled big, but his eyes never moved. As in, the only way you could tell he was conveying an emotion was by looking at his mouth. The rest of his face stayed the same. Most people, you could tell they're smiling even if their mouth was covered, because you smile with your whole face. But not this guy. Yeah, I just wanted some chips, maybe a Coke. Do you have any Doritos? Of course, he said, walking past me. He locked the door behind me before turning and smiling. I don't want anyone else walking in. He chuckled. Him locking the door was really creepy, but I just shrugged it off because the reasoning was pretty sound, even though it felt off. Follow me, the guy said as he walked towards the back of the store. I was young, but I really should have been smart enough to know that the store owners generally don't give customers a tour of the store, but I had lived a pretty sheltered life. I could feel that something was off, but I didn't want to offend him by asking questions like, What's that smell? and other things. We get to the back of the store to where those plastic flaps hang that separate the customer side and the back end. When the man sticks his hand through, parting through the plastic, then saying, right this way. Now alarm bells are starting to go off in my head, especially as he starts looking around and past me like someone who's selling drugs and trying to watch out for the police. Uh, back there? I ask and start to back up a little. That's when I then noticed chips right beside me on the aisle. The guy noticed me see the chips and then says, Yeah, back here. We got all our good stuff in the back. You can come take your pick. By this time, I had found the source of the buzzing. Flies are flying over the meat section, and the dim light that's reflecting off the packaging lets me know that it's been sitting there a while. I'll just take this if that's alright. I say nervously as I grab a bag off the shelf next to me and then start backing up towards the door. Trust me, those are no good. I have way better stuff back here. He smiles again, gesturing for me to head back. I fake pat my pockets, then saying, Oh man, I think I forgot my wallet in my car. I'll be right back. As soon as the words left my lips, I then spun around and did a light jog to the front, increasing with speed as I approached the door. I make it to the door and twist the lock a couple times until I hear the click. I push the door open and turn back to look at where the man is, but he's gone. I jumped into that car and sped the fuck out of that parking lot and didn't stop again until I reached my cousin's house. This was by far one of the eeriest and creepiest things that have ever happened to me. This happened when I was seven years old with my twin sister and mother. We had just entered our local grocery store, Surefine, when a man no more than 10 feet in front of us glanced over and immediately whipped his head back towards us. Now as a quick side note, my twin and I at that age were always dressed in matching dresses and we had long blonde hair that had always got us looks of alls and affection, but this was different. He was a bulky middle-aged man of mid-eastern descent and it stopped what he was doing to fully look at us up and down. A really husky smile crossed his scruffy face. My mother paid no mind to this, as she was no stranger to creepy men herself. I immediately grumbled to my twin Cass how creepy it was the way the man was looking at us. So as we turned left to start going through the aisles, Cass and I turned and we saw the man walking toward us with his shopping cart. When we first made eye contact, he immediately turned his attention to a table with baked goods on it, which kind of stood out to Cass and I more than if he had just kept walking normally. So my mother's obviously shopping and Cass and I just keep glancing back and we keep catching the man at the end of every aisle that we enter, just staring with no expression on his face and even from a slight distance, he was seemingly breathing like really weirdly. I also noticed that his cart continues to remain empty except for the baked goods that he grabbed when we had first looked back at him. We tell my mother, but she just rolls her eyes at us and tells us that he probably thinks we're following him because we keep looking at him. The man disappears as we hit the last of the aisles, and Cass and I are already on a completely different topic by now. When we're heading for the registers, 
having almost completely forgotten about him within minutes. We're about to make it to the register when my sister asks my mom for a candy bar, and I quickly join to which she then angrily replies that we don't have the money for it. We're both pouting at this point and she threatens to leave us as she begins putting things on the conveyor belt. But then Cass and I watch my mother turn to face us again when her expression completely changes and her eyes shift behind us. It's the man. He's sweating profusely at this point and he's literally less than like a foot behind us. Cass and I immediately take a step forward towards our mother. The man laughs awkwardly then apologizes, saying, Sorry ma'am. I didn't mean to scare you girls. You're all just so beautiful. These girls, are they yours? My mother kind of scoffs to this and then goes, Yeah, they're mine. And he does that same awkward laugh again, then saying, I couldn't help but notice that you don't have the money to get them what they want. How old are they, and you as well? I could help you. I have lots of money. Money's no problem for me. My mother's face then furrows in confusion and annoyance, then snapping. Um, excuse me? Like clockwork, he laughs again like it's some big joke, then says, I'm serious, how much? My mother stares at him blankly for a moment, and he continues, How much for the girls? I'd like both of them, but if you can only part with one, I could still make that work. I'll give you the money. Just name your price, and I can give them anything they want. Any candy they want. He grins yet again and wipes his brow, looking down at us. My mother doesn't respond to him, just looks at us and growls, Here. Now. So we do as we were told, which was fine by us because we didn't want to be anywhere near this creepy man. The cashier was a teenage girl no older than 17 and she was just completely wide-eyed watching this conversation occur as she silently continues to scan our groceries. Once we were next to my mother, she then growls at the man. If you so much as lay one fucking finger on my kids, I'll break it off and shove it down your throat. Which were some pretty big words coming from my 4 foot 11 mother. But the man's face darkens, and without even purchasing anything, he walks around the cash register and exits, but he doesn't get far. The entire front of the store is glass, so moments later, we watch as he presses his face against the glass, trying to see in, leaving a sweaty face print behind. Now, at this point, the cashier's alerting her manager and asking him to call the police. My mother immediately assures them that that's not necessary, and just asks the manager to walk us out to her car. We see no sign of the man as we unload our groceries and hop into the car. My mother quickly drives us home once we sit in the car for a few minutes, scanning for any signs that he might be waiting in a car or something. We eventually made it home safely, and nothing ever came of it. I don't know what happened to the man, but I truly hope he never convinced anyone to give him their kid. That's absolutely horrific to think about. This happened about four years ago. I was 20 years old at the time. The first time I met the guy who had become my grocery store stalker, he was standing outside the store collecting money for the Salvation Army's Christmas time donations. I'm a fairly friendly person, so I like to say hi to people who work at places I frequent just to be nice. This guy was a kid around my age, very tall, with a mild resemblance to Lurch from the Adams family. Dark circles under dark eyes, short black hair, and a kind of vacant look in his eyes. I chatted with him for maybe about two minutes, kind of just idle chit chat about the weather and whatnot. Nothing particularly memorable or interesting. I then waved goodbye and went home. Little did I know that that single moment would be the start of something that would have me genuinely afraid. About four or five months passed and I hadn't seen him again. Then one day as I was grocery shopping with a friend when, as we were chatting, she suddenly got really quiet and kind of recoiled backwards, then looking behind me. I turned around to see this guy who had to be at least six foot four, towering over me, not eight inches from my body. He said hi and he told me that he remembered from that December that I had talked to him and then asked for my number. I being young and had never really experienced this type of interaction before, told him that I didn't have my number memorized but that I would write his down and then maybe text him later. I kind of half waved my phone at him pointing at my at the time boyfriend whose picture was my wallpaper, making a point to say, Oh look, that's my boyfriend, to the guy, hoping he would clue in. 
but no luck. He told me his number, which immediately upon getting, I blocked, without letting him get my number. However, what really made my blood run cold was what he said to me after I put my phone away. He leaned in real close to me and in a really low voice, then told me, Whatever I text you is for your eyes only. I start to feel genuinely uncomfortable at this point. I said back, Uh, yeah, sure. It was nice talking to you, but we gotta get back to shopping. And I grabbed my friend and dragged her off, shooting a panicked look at her and asking her why she didn't bail me out. Apparently, he scared her too with him getting so close to me, and she just didn't know what to do. I also want to make it clear that I'm not exactly a small girl. I'm five foot eight and solidly built. I can certainly handle myself, and I very rarely ever feel intimidated or small in the presence of anyone, male or female. But this guy, he really made me feel tiny and scared. In the months that would follow, he would make me feel truly frightened. I had really hoped that that creepy interaction would be the last time I saw him, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. After that initial meeting with him saying that creepy thing about his text being for my eyes only, it seemed like I would run into him every single time that I got into the store. No matter what checkout lane I was in, he always seemed to appear at the end of it when I was finished shopping, and every time I was in the store, I would always notice him out of the corner of my eye watching me, no matter what area I was in. One time I even caught him following me out to my car. At that point I got scared and I finally decided to say something to the managers. After letting all the managers know what was going on, they then assured me that they would tell him not to talk to me. After that he wouldn't speak to me, but I would continue to see him following me around the store at a distance every single time I went up there. It got so bad and I felt so terrified that I started to be afraid to go to the store at all. But I'm one of those stubborn people who refuses to be intimidated by someone to the point where I'll stop doing something. I had really hoped that maybe it was just a coincidence that he was following me. After all, it was a really big store, and maybe he just had things to do that just happened to be in the same area as I was shopping in. So I started to pay close attention to my surroundings. Once I started really paying attention, I realized that every single time I was up there, I would constantly notice him in the same areas in the store that I was in. During my last encounter with him, I had went to the store to just grab two or three items that I needed for dinner that night, and I first saw him standing at the store when I got there, and with his back facing me, I quickly ran inside, hoping he didn't see me. Unfortunately, a few minutes later, I had saw him at the very back of the store, and items in hand, I immediately made a beeline towards the front. As soon as I got near the checkout, I ducked behind one of the shelf displays and watched carefully at the front of the store to see if the creepy guy would appear. I watched as he looked up and down at the checkout, and when he didn't see me there, I saw him step outside. At this point, I quickly ran to the nearest open cashier, rang up all my items, and then stuck my head out the door to look for him. I didn't see him there immediately, so I started trying to make my way back to where I was parked. I had parked a little ways away near the side of the store where a bunch of other small stores and restaurants were lined up at, and I was walking towards my car. I realized then that I saw him standing by the entrance that I had first entered the store through and then dug behind a pillar immediately, hoping he didn't see me. I watched carefully from behind the pillar, and as he scanned the parking lot, he obviously couldn't find me. After a minute or two, he started to walk out towards the direction of the parking lot in front of the store, and so I took that opportunity to make a run for it to my car as soon as that he was far enough away that I felt safe. As soon as I got into my car, I then locked the doors and to my horror when I looked up, he was standing there about 15 feet from my car with a shopping cart in front of him. I knew that he followed me, and he knew that I knew. I fully believed that he had chased after me, and when I made it to my car, he grabbed the nearest cart to make it look like he was collecting them from the parking lot. I remember just feeling absolutely terrified at that moment. I went home, and I immediately told my grandfather what had just happened. I began crying and shaking, and my grandfather told me to get in the car. Well, we're going to settle this. He and I drove up to the store in his car, and he walked me into the store and demanded we spoke with the managers immediately, both of them. When the managers arrived at customer service, he asked me to tell them what had been happening and demanded that they ensure he left me alone or that he would involve the police. The managers swore up and down they would take care of it. As far as I know, he wasn't fired immediately because my friend who first encountered him with me when this whole thing began told me that she would see him from time to time when she was there by herself, 
but that any time I went with her, she would never see him. I fully believed that he knew whenever I was there, only this time instead of stalking me, he avoided me. Eventually, everyone who knew the situation stopped seeing him there, so I think he may have gotten fired or moved on from that store. Either way, I haven't had any issues since, but I've never in my life felt so afraid of another human being as I did that day, seeing him make eye contact with me in the parking lot as I locked my car doors. It still really creeps me out to think that he was watching me so closely every time I entered the store that he could so easily avoid or follow me whenever he wanted. So yeah, I was stalked every time I went grocery shopping for four months straight, and I never want to experience that ever again. I worked as a Walmart cashier for a little over a year. I quit in August of 2015 when I went away to college. As a cashier, you see a lot of people in a day, especially at Walmart. And after a while, you don't even see people's faces when you look at them. But there are some people that you see so often you start to recognize and sometimes learn their names. There was this one guy, always in the same Green Bay Packers hoodie and Chicago Cubs baseball cap, that would often seek out my line no matter how long it was just so he could stare at me and rarely say a word. Whenever he did say anything to me, he would always lean across the register to get closer to my face. He always gave me a really bad vibe, but when I asked other cashiers about him, they said that he had never been weird around them. One of the girls even said he was a close family friend. After that, I dropped the issue. One night after I'd been there for about a year, I was working a 2-11 to 11 shift. Those shifts were always the worst because you'd be there for three, sometimes four front-end managers but also because it takes the chunk out of your day when you were actually going to do anything. So I'm down on the self-checkout. It's about 10.15, so I'm counting the minutes until I can shut it down at 10 to 11. The creepy guy comes in the front door and makes a beeline for me at the self-check podium. When I see him come in, I instantly get nervous. He walks up and says, Can I still buy a cell phone card and electronics? I told him I only worked as a cashier on the front end, so I didn't know anything about electronics, but he could go back and check. He seemed peeved by this answer, but he walked away without another word. About ten minutes later, he comes up with a prepaid phone card and said there's no one at the register in electronics, so I activate his card and hand it to him, telling him to have a good night, but he pushes the card back at me without saying a word, and I say, Is something wrong? To which he replies, These minutes aren't on my phone yet, are they? I was confused by this statement because of course they weren't, he had just bought the card. I shook my head and he waved the card in front of my face. Why the fuck are you just standing there? Reactivate my phone! When he talked, he was so close I could smell his breath and I was a little scared. I wanted to put in the call to my manager so that someone could come down and help me. This is where I should probably mention that I'm about 5 foot 3 and he is closer to probably 6 foot 5 and very stocky, so he was towering over me, and the thought that he could easily overpower me crossed my mind, but I get so nervous whenever men yell or cuss at me because my dad was never the type to yell or cuss. I took the card out of his hand and he slammed his cell phone on the scanner. I was trying not to let him know I was nervous, but I was terrified. I knew I had never put minutes on a prepaid phone before, but I don't dare tell him that in fear of what he might do. So I read the directions, pick up his phone, dial the number, and as I'm putting in the card number, his phone runs out of minutes. I try to call back and get an error message. I'm at a loss. I meekly hand him his phone back and say, I'm sorry, something went wrong. I don't know what is happening. As soon as I say it, he takes his phone, opens it up, tries to dial someone, and when it doesn't work, he looks at me with furious eyes. He screams, what the fuck did you do to my phone? What the fuck? His voice is echoing in the store, and unfortunately we haven't gotten the end of second shift rush yet, so there is no one around. He closes his phone and opens it again, trying to make another call, but when it doesn't work, he throws the phone down on the scanner again. He says, I don't know what you did to my phone, but you better fucking fix it. But this comes much more quietly, practically a whisper. At this point, I'm worried he's going to put his hands on me, and I don't know what to do. 
I put in a call for a manager from my register, and then I say, I've called someone that might be able to help, but we're at shift change right now, so it might be faster for you to take it to the customer service desk. He picks up his phone off the podium, still mumbling under his breath that I fucked up his phone, and I'm hoping I can get out of there before he comes back, or at least have someone else down at the self-check with me. Another 15 minutes go by, and I don't see him again. As I'm picking up items that people left by the registers, getting ready to shut them down for the night, he comes back and stands by the podium. He still looks completely pissed off, and my stomach has sank. He made that finger motion that means come here without saying anything, and for some reason that makes me even more nervous. When I'm standing in front of him, he leans so close to my face that I think he's about to kiss me or bite me or God knows what. I try to take a step back, but he takes a step forward when I do. A creepy grin comes across his face as he says, The girl up there fixed it. Simple fix. But next time, I expect you to know what to do. Understand? I nod because I don't think I can speak. He gets impossibly closer before saying, I'm sorry I raised my voice. I never should have done that especially to a pretty girl like you. When he adds the last part, he lightly uses his fingertips to brush my bangs to the side. I took a step back and he said, Let me make it up to you. Let me buy you a drink. I shake my head, I say. No thank you, I'm only 19. He says, So we'll get a couple of beers and go back to my place. Again, I shake my head. No, it's really okay. I'm not much of a drinker. I have an early morning tomorrow. He looks displeased with this answer and says, Tell you what, I'll wait over here by the door just in case you change your mind. I smile at him weakly and tell him to have a good night. When I see him walk through the security, I quickly shut down the registers and sign out of mine. Then I run over to find a manager to tell about the whole thing. The third shift manager that I tell looks at me like I'm lying and when I'm finished says, I know Todd, he wouldn't hurt a fly, he doesn't have it in him, you're probably just being dramatic. She then turns to another older cashier behind her, shakes her head and mumbles, teenagers. I ask if I can have someone to walk me to my car, and they tell me that management is in a meeting and the security guy went home already, so I clocked out and went to the bathroom. I waited in the bathroom for about 10 minutes before coming out and attempting to go to my car. When I walked around the corner through the security things, he wasn't sitting on the bench right there like I had been expecting. I relaxed a little before I realized he was standing just outside the door, far enough away to keep it from closing, smoking a cigarette. He has his back turned toward the door. Luckily, I never went out the front door so I always went to the corridor and not the side door. I quietly closed the door behind me so maybe I wouldn't catch his attention. I rushed to my car which was fortunately very close to the building. As I'm quick walking to my car I hear him shout, Hey, why are you avoiding me? Come here. At this point, I take off into a full on sprint which is not easy because I'm wearing Sperry's so it's like running in clogs. I get to my car, get in, lock my door as I'm starting it and don't even bother with my seatbelt. By that point, he had made it almost all the way to my car and was still yelling, telling me he just wanted to talk. I took off as fast as I could and took the longest way home with the most turns and twists that I could. When I got home, I told my dad about the experience and he was so angry that no one had answered my calls or believed me he called the store manager the next day and complained. I was never contacted about his complaint. But from that night on, whenever I saw that guy I would run to the bathroom, or if I couldn't get away, I would put out my lane closed sign and turn off my light so he couldn't get in my line. You always hear people talking about the people of Walmart as being trashy, but they never tell you about the select few that are scary as hell.